This lecture is about probability. We're going to discuss what randomness is, the rules of probability, and the difference between independent and dependent events. So, about the role of probability. The first concept we need to understand is randomness. Think about tossing a coin. Any single result of a coin toss is random, but we can think about what are the outcomes of those coin tosses over many tosses. If these trials are independent, that is, the outcome of a new coin flip is not influenced by the result of a previous flip, that's important for us to know in probability. So let's uh, toss a coin. The probability of a heads is 0.5. Uh, so what about if we did that over a number of repeated trials? That's what this graph shows on the left. We're looking at the number of tosses on the x-axis and note that the x-axis is scaled in a logarithmic way so that we can see up to 5,000 tosses. On the y-axis is the proportion of heads. So as an example, in the first series of tosses, you can note that we received a lot of heads during our first few tosses. But then we started to receive more tails, and eventually we went down, and now we're hovering around 0.5. That is, there's an equal chance of getting a heads versus a tail. In the second series, we started off with lots of tails, but eventually, similar to the first toss, this began to stabilize as we tossed more and more coins. The probability or the proportion of getting a heads was 0.5. Now this is an important concept because it relates to something that we call the gambler's fallacy. And that is the belief that an event will occur more frequently than normal it is less likely to happen in the future or vice versa. And so you can think about someone that's gambling and they're on a hot streak. And they said, I'm on a hot streak. I know that I'm going to be uh, getting another, another win. Uh, you know, I'm going to win that next poker hand. Um, and so that's an example of the gambler's fallacy. The probability of an event doesn't care what the probability of the last event is, as long as those two events are independent, which we'll talk more about. So how do we assign probabilities to event? Well, there are a couple of ways. We could do a random experiment, and that's when we do some kind of measurement or observation that has an uncertain outcome. We also need to list a sample space. This is a list of all possible outcomes of an experiment. And so this would be, well, when we flip a coin, we can either get a heads or a tails. If a baseball team plays a game, they could either win or lose, or in a very rare case, maybe they tie. If we look at all the events, well, these are just a collection of one or more outcomes. One baseball game, one coin flip. Uh, it's just one event that's a collection of maybe more, more outcomes. And so the role of probability then uh, is to really examine this. It's to measure uncertainty and to quantify the confidence in our conclusion. And so we're gonna look at an example with rolling dice. A pretty straightforward one. So we want to know what is the probability of getting two sixes? Is this common or is this rare? And so here's the example of that. And so what we're first going to do is going to list out the sample space. So as it turns out there are 36 different outcomes uh, when we roll a dice twice. And so we could get a 1-1, one, 1-2, one, 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 and then so forth. So that's often a good place to start when it comes to calculating probability. Just list out all the possible outcomes that could result. Now we know that each outcome is equally likely. We're going to assume that the dice are fair that we're throwing. Each outcome has a probability of 1 over 36. Uh, and so the probability of two sixes then uh, is really uh, just one of those cases. And so the probability of getting two sixes is then 0 0.0278. So that would be uh, quite rare. There would be about a, a 2 or 3% chance of that happening if we were to roll two die. This concept of probability is really important for us because we're going to start looking at it in terms of inference and in terms of statistics. And there's a couple of ways we'll do that. Oftentimes when we talk about taking a sample uh, and saying something about the population, we're really doing statistics when we say that. But if we have some population and we want to know more about the sample, 
often it's the probability that links between the two. What does that mean? Well, take, for example, these two cases where we talk about the same thing, but one is from a probability perspective and one is from an inferential statistics perspective. For the probability, say a farmer oversees 100 soybean fields, 15 of them are, have, or are infested with soybean aphid. We want to sample 10 of these fields. What's the chance that 3 of the 10 are infested with soybean aphid? So that's really relying on what do we know about the probability of a field having soybean aphid. On the contrary, the inferential statistics perspective says that we have 10 soybean fields and they're sampled in a county with a thousand soybean fields. Three of those fields are infested with soybean aphid. What's the proportion of soybean fields that are infested with the aphids? And so note the slight differences in the perspectives here of both statements but both rely some kind of probability to tell us the answer.